Hi, Pat here. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you some more Fusion 360 techniques, and we're going to make a webcam cover. So instead of using a piece of tape or a post-it note to cover your webcam, like I am back here, we're going to actually design something for your webcam that looks nice, kind of like this. And in the process, I'll show you some techniques like sketch symmetry, extruding from an existing face, and the loft tool, which is actually a pretty cool way to make some advanced geometry. So let's go into the program and get started. Like last time, start out first by creating a new sketch on the XY plane. This will be the piece that rests on the top of the webcam. Since the piece will be symmetric, we're going to start out by drawing the left half of the sketch. Draw a horizontal line starting at the origin and going out left 28.5 millimeters. Then draw a vertical line from the origin that goes up 29 millimeters. With that line selected, press the X key to make it a guideline. Once we're finished with this half, we'll use this line to mirror the sketch over to the right side. Next, draw another horizontal line at the top that measures 32 millimeters. Then bring a vertical line down for 19 millimeters. And finally, close the shape with the final line in the last opening. Let's smooth out the corners by adding a couple fillets. Go to the Sketch Fillet tool and then select the corner you want to round out. I'm setting the fillet diameter to 3 millimeters. Then, go to the Sketch Fillet tool again and round out the bottom left corner, this time at 2.5 millimeters. To round out the upper left corner, let's add a spline so we can fully control the curve. Select the Sketch Spline tool and then draw a spline on the left side, a few millimeters down from the top, over to the top line, about 12 millimeters from the left edge. Then, use the green handles to make the spline tangent to each line where it connects. Now, you have a nice asymmetric curve that you couldn't get with a normal fillet. To finish the sketch, select the lines and curves that you want to mirror over to the right side. Then, select the Sketch Mirror tool, which will bring up a dialog. The Object section is already filled out with the items you selected, so choose the Mirror Line option to select our midpoint line. Choose the guideline we created, and then press OK to create the right side of the sketch. If everything went well, the sketch should now show a completed shape in the middle. Press Stop Sketch in the lower right to move to the next step. For organization, let's quickly rename the sketch by double-clicking its name. I'm going to call this one Base and then press Enter. Then, let's use the sketch to make a 3D body. Select the main shape in the sketch, and then press the E key to extrude it up 1.25 millimeters. Now our base is done, so next we need to make the front piece. First, we need to split the top face to mark where the front cover will attach. So let's create a plane by going to Construct Offset Plane. Select the front face of the base, and then offset it by negative 2 millimeters. This will be the thickness of the front piece. Again, for organization, you can rename the plane so you remember what it does in the future. Next, go to the Modify Split Face tool. Select the top face, which is what we want to split. Then, select the Splitting Tool option and choose the plane we just created. Now, you'll see that our construction plane will slice the face into two pieces. Press OK and we're done with this step. Let's create another construction plane. This time, select the XY plane as the base plane and offset it up by 15 millimeters. Then, choose to create a new sketch and select the new plane you just created. This sketch will be very simple. Use the two point rectangle tool and create a rectangle that measures 2 millimeters high and 23 millimeters wide. It doesn't matter where you draw it because we're going to use constraints to center it exactly where we want. In the constraints menu, choose the midpoint constraint. Select the origin, which represents a point where a line's midpoint will be attached. Then, click on the bottom line of the rectangle, and the rectangle should snap into place exactly where we want it. You can stop the sketch and rename it if you want. Now, we're going to use the 2mm wide face of the body and this 2mm wide rectangle sketch to create connecting geometry between them using the loft tool. So, go to the Create Loft tool. In the dialog, we'll add the objects that define the profile of the loft of geometry. In this case, select the sketch and the thin face from the body. We aren't using any rails, but if you wanted more advanced control over how the geometry is created between the profiles, 
then you would create additional sketches to use as your rails. Press OK to complete the loft, and now you have some geometry for the front of the webcam cover. To finish the front, we need one more sketch. So, start another sketch, and this time, use the back face of the front geometry for the sketch plane. Just sketch out a center point circle that is on the top edge of the geometry at the midpoint, and give it a diameter of 20 millimeters. Stop the sketch, and then select the circle. Press the E key to extrude it, pull it back 2 millimeters, and make sure the operation is set to join. Press OK, and now you have a circle that will fully cover the camera. So now the front is done, but I want a piece in the back that will hold the cover in place. So, create another new sketch, and select the back face of the base as the sketch plane. Create a center point circle with a 4 millimeter diameter. It doesn't matter where you put it, we'll fix that in a second. Then, draw a line from the origin to the center of the circle. Select the line and press X to make it a guideline. Then, choose the horizontal vertical constraint and choose the line to snap it into a vertical position. Next, draw another line inside the circle, but not going through the center. If you can, make it horizontal so the constraint is automatically applied. Otherwise, add the horizontal constraint yourself. Again, press X to make that line a guideline. Then, use the midpoint constraint to lock that line to the center of the circle. Remember, first select the center point of the circle, and then select the line that will be constrained to it. Now, draw a line from the edge of the circle down to the x-axis on both sides of the circle. Then, draw a final line connecting those lines together to get the final shape of the back support. Apply the vertical constraint to the two lines coming down, and then finally, press the D key to use the dimension tool, and select the center guideline to define it at 3 millimeters high. We're done with this sketch. Select the shapes you just created, and then extrude them inward 2 millimeters. Now, we have a nice tab that will keep the webcam cover in place on the back. But, that doesn't stop the cover from sliding from side to side, so let's add a little more geometry to fix that. Create one more sketch, and for this plane, select the face on the angled piece of the side of the base. This geometry will be very similar to the tab we created in the back, except a little smaller. So, so create a circle, and set the diameter to 2 millimeters. Add a line from the center of the circle to the midpoint of the face. You'll see a triangle over your cursor when you're hovering over that point. Draw the horizontal line in the circle, then use the midpoint constraint to snap it to the center. Make both lines into guidelines using the X key. Set the height of the center line to 1 millimeter using the dimension tool. Then, draw the rest of the shape using lines from the edge of the circle down to the geometry. With the sketch finished, extrude the sketch 1 millimeter into the body. This little nub will prevent the webcam cover from sliding around. To mirror that little tab, double-click the extrude step in your timeline and change the operation to New Body. Then, go to the Create Mirror tool. Make sure the pattern type is set to Bodies, and then select the tab. Click on the Mirror Plane option and choose the YZ plane. After pressing OK, you'll see the mirrored object appear. Finally, go to the Modify Combine tool. Select the main object as the target body, and then select the other two objects as the tool bodies. Make sure the operation is set to Join, and the checkboxes are unselected, then press OK to combine everything into one set of geometry. One more cosmetic tweak. Select the edge near the circle on the front of the cover, and press the F key to add a fillet. Set it to 1.5 millimeters to round out that corner. Repeat on the other side to make it symmetric. I didn't like how the loft looked up near the top, so I decided to experiment a little. I double-clicked the loft item in my timeline, and noticed that the smaller top face was listed first in the profiles of the loft. So, I tried switching them around, and I liked how it looked better, so I kept those new settings. That also let me increase the fillet on those corners to 4.5 millimeters, which I also liked better. And now, finally, I can send it to my 3D printer. Now that it's printed, I can get rid of my post-it note and start using something that looks a lot nicer. So that's it. It's a big improvement over a post-it note. 
Now, I realize this design is very specific to the exact webcam that I own, but the great thing is you can just take measurements of your webcam and then design your own using the same techniques I just showed you. And don't be afraid to print out a design that doesn't work. The great thing about 3D printing is you can very rapidly iterate over designs until you find one that works for you. In fact, I actually printed out multiple versions before I finally got to one that I liked. This first one I purposely printed out at only two levels thick just because I wanted to make sure the base covered everything I wanted it to on the webcam. Then the next one I printed out was actually, the walls were too thin. So as you can tell, it broke way too easily. I also wanted to make the, uh, the circle here bigger to cover the webcam better. And then the last version I printed out was actually pretty close to what I wanted. I just had to change a couple fillets and I decided to print it in black because that better matched what I have on my desk. So keep in mind that your first print probably won't be your last print. In fact, it's pretty rare that you'll design something and then your first print will be exactly what you envisioned it. Instead, just figure out what you need to change, go back in your design and tweak it and then try again. That's the fun thing about 3D printing. So anyway, I'm gonna try and upload more frequent videos like this where I show you the modeling aspect of 3D printing. So if you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and you can be notified when I upload new content. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this and I'll see you next time.